Congress, I believe, up in New York. And uh, <laughs> if you look at it carefully, uh, that's the secret constellation of the sky, everybody. Nobody knows that Orion has a unicorn along with his two hunting dogs, Canis Major by Sirius and Canis Minor. Now, we didn't hear the beginning of this, but we were talking a little bit about Galileo. So imagine that I had Galileo with me, and it's actually Rue. And Rue is able to extend our senses. So um, the reason Rue's here, and I'm going to build up a little bit of intro. Rue, this is a little bit different. Uh, some of our members met you at our Astro Quora Forum. In fact, they were quite uh, excited to talk with you again, and that's why you have wound up here at our meeting tonight. Um, Lou, uh, I'm sorry, um, Rue has actually been, we bumped into him at Cherry Springs. And um, he was a member with us years ago here at Rittenhouse and the amazing array of telescope gear that he had purchased and then his ability to share with us some of the things that he sees have just been mesmerizing. So I'm going to turn it over to Rue, but I want to give a shout out to um, a, a, a mentor that both Lou and I, or Rue and I had, and that was uh, Jerry Rodriguez. Um, Jerry's, I'm not, he's, it's not, he's not rest in peace. It's not a, I'm not doing a, a shout out that way. Jerry's talked with our group a couple times and I'm hoping to get him back sometime in the future. It looks like according to his, um, website that he has, um, and I'll bring them up at the end for the members to look at. looks like he kind of stopped being active about six or seven years back. But when I had talked with Rue about Jerry, uh, we kind of bonded a bit there because we both knew him and we were both very much influenced him. So, Rue, if I were to say to you that you have the same influence on me that Jerry did long ago, um, I hope that's not building you up too much, but I feel you do. And I'm certainly glad you're joining us here tonight. Would you help us a little bit? I'm going to stop my screen share and go over to you. You want to start with that Christmas tree nebula? Yeah, sure. Uh, can you guys hear me okay, first off? I can hear you. Can everyone else? All right. Oh, um, they're, all, they're, all, they're all muted. They're all muted. All right. I can hear you great. Okay. <laughs> Let me share my, oh, can you uh, make me a host? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, and... I gotta have some permissions here. Yep. Yep. And if someone can get to them before me, go ahead. Hold on. Got it. Got it. More. All right. Should be getting a permission now. Sure. Hi, Rue. Thanks for, thanks for jumping in here. For those of you in our international audience, we're going to get snow tonight here in the Philadelphia area. So this is kind of a neat night for all of us here on the East Coast to get together. We're hunkered down waiting for the storm to come over, and I can't think of a better way to spend this evening. Okay, so I just saw it pop up there. Hit OK or go to application, Rue. Uh, uh, this is just a, can you see it now? Mm, yes. Okay. All right, so this is the Christmas tree cluster you were just talking about. Um, if you can see the shape of a tree right here, um, and if you think of like the, the, the trunk of the tree and then Christmas lights, and if you just turn it a little bit, you can see how it would look like a Christmas tree. So um, this image I was very excited to take because I took it right before Christmas and it was my virtual Christmas card to everybody um and i think like i'm absolutely in love with this picture uh there's a couple parts to this image um there is uh right here where my mouse is uh it's called to call the cone nebula um there's some people who have a telescope with higher magnification that can zoom in a lot more and get a lot more detail in that area that's also known as the cone but the whole thing is known as a christmas tree cluster um this image here um it was, it was a relatively short exposure for me. It was only about three hours long. I was taking this in between some of the other targets we'll talk about later, um, but I was taking this in between those. Um, but I wanted to, like I, uh, I took this picture right before Christmas because I wanted to get this just to send a picture to everybody, uh, especially because uh, it would seem very timely at the time. So, uh, but yeah, um, this I took in December. It was very cold when I took it. Uh, winter astronomy is, is, is beautiful, but it's very, very treacherous sometimes. Uh, some of the images I took, uh, I believe, uh, was around negative, oh, ne like 29 degrees, which is like negative two degrees in Celsius. Uh, how, many, how many layers, Lou? <laughs> the, that was like... Were you like bundled up, couldn't even bend? <laughs> yeah, like my, my gloves were like, you know, was, was struggling. But yeah, this area uh, has a lot of nebulosities. You see, there's a lot of hydrogen alpha in here. Um, there's a lot of oxygen data as well. 
Um, but this image, when I took it, um, I took about three hours of it. So that is, yeah, it took 10, 18 images of 10 minutes long. And, um, and you stack them, um, use, I use an app called PixInsight to stack them together. Um, and then um, did some processing as well. So there's a lot of different steps that you followed for processing, um, which there's a, a, we'll go over um, as we go through the other pictures, because some of the steps kind of repeat themselves uh, over time. But yeah, that's cool. the Christmas tree cluster. So when you're looking at this, you're not retouching anything. Can I assume that all the red is emission nebula? Yeah, all the red is uh, emission. Um, there's a little bit of reflection nebula right here in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of oxygen data. Uh, I have a color, like a one-shot color camera. Right. So it's kind of hard to separate um, the different gases in that. Um, mm -hmm. If you look online and look up... Um, what people call the Hubble palette, which is where they, they kind of focus on the narrow band. You'll actually see some different variations of this image where you see a lot more blues and greens, which is the oxygen sulfur that is shown off. Um, but there's a lot of emission nebula. And there's some dark nebula over here. So like all this is mm -hmm. just dust that is blocking the light. So between, from... the, between the dark nebula and the center you were circling, is there a little bit of reflection there? Because I see like a little bit of a bluish color. Yeah, like, there's a little, a little bit of reflection there. Um, uh, left that's, there. Yeah, right that's my side, yeah. yeah, that's my understanding of it. There's a little bit of reflection there, okay. um, but it's mostly uh, emission. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. How long did you have to do the processing work afterward? This one, um, I was actually relatively quick with this one. Uh, this one took about like about maybe forty minutes of actual processing. The stacking takes a little while sometimes. It takes about just about thirty to forty minutes to stack everything. Uh, but this is about 30 minutes, I would say. Uh, I was trying to rush with this because I wanted to uh, have a Christmas card. <laughs> um, some of the other processing I've done, uh, and this one, as you know, the one thing about astronomy is it, it's never um, like you're never done with getting images. You know, like I can next year, I can get another 10 hours and add to it. You know, and I can keep doing that till the end of time. Um, there's a there's a like you can tweak it forever. <laughs> yeah, and you can add more data to forever. And as I get a better camera, a better telescope, uh, I can add to it and get better and better data and get better. And as I get process, better processing as the time goes by, right. I can I can always get better. So for ne like, so this was a short uh, image. It was only three hours long, uh, but I still think there was a lot of detail captured. It was a, it was almost a clear. Um, it helped that it was a new moon weekend as well. So there was only right. like. Uh, right. like a 1% illumination from the moon, which helped uh, helped as well, so. Okay, okay, how about you unshare your screen and I'll take them down a little bit further now. Let's, let's go, let's go. I think you did, all right. Let me see if I can find this now on mine. Oh, you know what? Uh, help me out, anybody in the background. I got to unhighlight um, Rue. I can't find, there's a lot of people here tonight. Got Thanks it. for all coming out here. Okay, thank so you. What do you mean on highlight? Oh, okay. That's You're it. Oh, no. Okay, because I, I couldn't get to my screen on that one. Well, we learn as we go along, everybody. Okay, so we left off right there at that Christmas tree nebula, and I said to you, don't expect to see that with a pair of binoculars. And I'll be honest with you, my telescope views of that have, have not been fulfilling whatsoever. So I, I can find find the stars in the area, but that's about it. Um, so the camera does exactly what Galileo said, extends our senses beyond what we can see. Now this next area down here by the nose of that uh, horse, Manisaurus, is the Rosette Nebula. And I could say come down from above, but actually I found a better way to find this. If you come over here to Orion's head, most of you can see that, it's pretty easy. It's a couple stars in the nighttime sky. If you look at the distance between Orion's head right there, and uh, let's say you measure it over here to Betelgeuse, that's about five and a half degrees. So any of you who have low power binoculars, eight power or 10 power, you can see about a six degree swath of the sky. So in my low power binoculars, I actually make paths up so this path starts right at Orion's head and takes us over to Betelgeuse. And here's where the path gets a little bit into the scruff. Got to make it from Betelgeuse all the way over there to the Rosette Nebula. 
Well, in your binoculars, you'll start to see there's some faint stars out there. And it's almost like they make a staircase. From Betelgeuse, we come down, we go up, we come down, and we can almost follow that path. And if you take your binoculars, it's actually two fields of view. Pick any one of these stars. Let's say we pick uh, well, this one right here. If we measure the distance to that one, oh, let's try it this way. Yep, yep, uh, selection, uh, come on, selection, measure the distance. Here we go. If we go from there to there, you're talking about three degrees, a half a field of view. Come over here, that would be six degrees, right about there. And then nudge your binoculars a bit further over, and there's that rosette nebula. So let me do something here that's a lot better of a look. No, no, come on, images, be gone, because that's what you're going to see when you look up there with your binoculars. And it's easy to trip across it. I mean, it's easy to see this one, everybody, because it looks kind of like the, uh, the six on a dice cube. It's elongated a bit, but it easily stands out that way in your telescope. And that might be all you're able to see. If you get in a little bit closer and you magnify the view, uh, you see a few more stars. It does look a little bit more like a cluster. It actually tends to lose the dice cube appearance when you magnify too much. But now, let's switch back over to Rue on this one because he can give us a little bit better view of what we're actually seeing there. Want to give it a try, Rue? You may be muted. I think you're muted. I, I was muted. <laughs> Go for uh, it. All right. So this is the lovely Rosette Nebula. And uh, uh, this is, um, again, there's a lot of hydrogen happening here. Um, this is one of my longer images. So this one took about 11 and a half hours of collection of data. Um, I took this over four different nights um, between clouds and um, clouds and like just, you know, waiting for a good night uh, and waiting for um, it to rise above a decent height because you want you don't want it to be low to the horizon when you take a picture. You want it to be at least about 20 degrees, um, 10, 15, depending on where you are to be able to take it. So uh, this was about four days worth of uh, data capture. Um, and so it's about 11 and a half hours. This is another one of those things where Ted, you can go, I've seen some images with 30 to 40 hours of data. Wow. And, and you can see like some of this dark nebula just pop out even more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the goal is to keep adding on to this over time. Um, but one of my favorite things about this is just, um, it looks so dynamic and so 3D to me. Um, like, I feel like this just makes it pop out. Like, I feel like I can see through the rose, I can see through it and see the stars. And here is the dice you were talking about. Yeah, it's right there. The it's right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, orientation is a little different. You know, there's no, yeah. no you know, it's. Um, okay. And then here is like a little dark nebula. They call them like uh, gobules, I think is what it was called. Yeah. I can't remember right. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but again, there's a lot of emission in here as well. So a lot of the red you see is all hydrogen. Um, the lighter areas, uh, there's a lot of oxygen data in there. Um, um, and that's what the, uh, the blue, some of the blueness in here is oxygen reflection. I was able to extract the data out of the, uh, the, the, the oxygen data from the images. And I was able to separate those and kind of process a little differently to make the blues pop. Right. Um, some of the pictures, if you notice, uh, if you see them in other rosettes, too, like in, especially in the in the images in, in um, Stellarium or the app you're using, it would look really red because that's the hydrogen alpha is so dominant in this area. Um, right. But I was, you know, some, you're able to process some of it out of it. Uh, in this processing, again, I used an app called PixInsight. Um, I had over a hundred different frames hmm. uh, between uh, five and 10 minutes, uh, depending on the night and depending on the filter I used uh, to stack. Um, and, you know, stacking, you know, you need a pretty decent computer to stack them. I mean, you don't, you can get away with like a lot of computers, but if you want to get it done quickly, that takes a little while. And then the processing, um, there were a few steps that we had to take to extract the colors out of it. Um, so when, uh, so when you just take it and you just stack everything, it looks just, it looks very dull because you have to bring the colors out. Mm -hmm. um, and um, with this one, you know, it's got a pretty cool 3D effect. It was, 
Um, it's an NGC object. There's multiple different other NGC objects in here. Um, but yeah, this is the rosette. And uh, I think those, it's one of the most beautiful objects in the sky. If my understanding is correct, those globules, that's where a star formation is taking place. Oh, at correct, the very yeah. tips of those. And it's the stars that can somehow escape from those uh, globulars and get away from all that activity that might develop planets. Am I right in my understanding, too, that this is a star cluster in the foreground and a nebula in the background? Yeah, a lot of people call it um, the you know, the... the Right in the middle, like the NGC 244 designation I, I have typed in here is towards the cluster. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, if you put in, there's a whole bunch of other, um, let me go to my next tab over here. If I click on this one here, you can see there's multiple NGC ca categorizations. If you put in NGC 2239, you'll still see this. And if you put in 2244, you'll still see this. And if, so these are different uh, clusters in one object. So there's a lot of things happening in this one image. Is this your picture with those labeled, or is this a software? So this is um, uh, the the app I use called Pixinside the pro to process it. It actually has an astrometry feature where you can actually um, label it'll label it for you. Oh, um, the plate you, solves and yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, you um, if you give it the right coordinates, it'll actually find uh, a matching star pattern and put uh, the labels in there for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no. it makes it. Kind of makes it easy to like uh, remember what's in there later on. I also think it looks really cool because you can see the grid. Uh, depending on and if I had a wider field of view, you can actually see a lot of different labels in one spot. You know, mm -hmm. but yeah. Wow, now that must be cool too to take your photo and put it in there and have it pick out all those sites for you. That, yeah, uh, some images, especially if you're looking at like some galaxies, you can see just a lot of like this one right here. This, this is a little galaxy in there. So it's kind of cool. Like you don't even know it's there, but you know, you see it's in there <laughs> yeah. and it was like, Ooh, a galaxy. And it's just yeah. so far away. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. No, that's great. And you might not even notice that in the picture, right? Yourself. I mean, I, I wouldn't have never known to, I would not have known to look for it, but that's why I said, this, uh, this must be cool. It's like treasure digging for treasure in your own yeah, pictures. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Cool. Let me okay, uh, hand it back to Go ahead. Yeah, unshare your screen. Let me share mine now. Let's, and let's go back to the star tour. Let's do a little tour over this way. I'll uh, mute myself again. Okay, hold on. Oh, it's not. It's, there we go. Okay. Three, two, one, count. And screen coming back up. All right. So I turned the nebula picture off there so you wouldn't get confused there. So that was the path. And I started it over here with Orion and worked my way back over there to the um, uh, Rosette Nebula. But um, no tour of the sky in the winter, especially, is complete without Orion's belt. Uh, Al Nitak, Al Nilam, Mintaka, the three belt stars. Um, if you look at the distance between those, those you can put inside your binocular view also. So again, we'll take the selection, get the measuring stick out, and get to the other side you're talking about two and a half three degrees so there's no reason you can't catch all three of those stars in fact i believe i can do this in almost a, up to about a 20 power telescope because your field of view goes down as your magnification goes up a beautiful area of the sky to tool around in because you can't resist down below here uh, you can't resist the uh, orion nebula itself and orion's sword so for those of you who are not familiar with orion he's got four bright stars to him he's got his uh, shoulder stars betelgeuse and bellatrix and down here you got saif and uh, rigel it makes kind of like a rectangle a lot of different things have been seen here. I have students who thought that the belt looked like the butterfly body and the wings were the shoulders and the feet down below. Had some amazing interpretations. What is kind of neat about this constellation is that in almost every culture around the world, it's associated with some type of male, male water, warrior, male deity. And uh, I even did a little bit of asking into this about, so why would all different cultures see like him as a uh, male and Andromeda as female? And they said it's the angle or the curvature of the stars. Apparently, the angular constellations have some type of masculine connotation in cultures, and those got the male type of attributes, and the curvy, wavy star lines became the female. So it's interesting that Orion is up there, a Osiris, king of the dead for the Egyptians, um, Longsash, king of the... Uh, 
uh, ruler of the ancient campfires of the other uh, Indian souls that have passed by up there. And I'm talking native Southwest American culture there. And uh, for anybody who has a telescope, um, the, the view of a lifetime other than Saturn is, of course, the Great Orion Nebula. So it's down here in Orion's sword, and I'm not going to give it away here. I'm going to move into it, and I'll, I'll show you some of the stars. And you're lucky in your telescope if you kind of pick this up. Uh, you can get the trapezoid there pretty easily, but you will see a lot more nebulosity here. So I'm going to let Lou take this from here. And Lou, you should do, uh, try this. Take us right here from the sword. Go on up through uh, maybe the horse head and, and follow your way up to uh, the uh, ghost nebula, Casper's nebula, which is right up here towards his shoulder. Uh, I'll find it at the end there, but see if you can take all three if you'd like. You ready? Want to give it a try? Go ahead. I'm going to stop my share. All right. Let's do it. Uh, let's let me get it ready. All right. Can you see this now? Mm hmm. Looking good. So this is uh, Orion Nebula. So it's M42, quite possibly the most photographed astro image, uh, unless you count the sun and the moon. Um, so it's like anyone that's getting into astrophotography um, at some point has either tried to take it or taken it successfully or failed or uh, compared their progress in astrophotography to this image. Um, so this is uh, this section here is what's called M42. It's uh, um, our Orion Nebula, or some people call it the Great Orion Nebula. Right down here is uh, called the Running Man Nebula, which I think is a pretty fun name. It looks like a little person running, depending. Like I feel like it's a head right there, arms and uh, that. Uh, so this is a star forming region. There's a lot of lot of stuff going on here. Um, and it's obviously very bright. I mean, this image, uh, to give you an idea, it didn't need a lot of exposure at all. This was actually a very um, short exposure. This was only about an hour's worth of data. Uh, and I actually didn't even need an hour. Like I've seen a shorter images that get better, that may look better or look similar. Um, the reason I went so long is I wanted to capture some of the dust on the outside like some of this outer faint details, you know, I need, I wanted the, the, the time to capture those details outside. Uh, and I've seen some people go even longer. Um, one of my friends, uh, Jim, he's on this call. He actually did 40 hours on this image, I think. And he got so much, like, if you just keep going, there's so much gas and dust in this area. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I've been dying to take this picture. This uh, Ryan Nebula is actually what, what would make me want to get into astrophotography. You know, that's something that uh, anyone who tries to take a picture uh, should, of, of any object should try and take, because it doesn't take a lot. It's very easy. It's so bright. Um, some of the pictures I added to this were only 10 seconds long, and I could still see a lot of detail in just a 10 second image. Uh, it's truly stunning how much detail is in just how much, how bright this object is. Um, and we talked about, uh, seeing all those different labels. Uh, so this is a website called uh, Astrobin. Um, you can see, again, there's so many objects right in this area. There's like a couple of NGC objects. There's a couple of bright stars. Um, so I thought that was cool as well. And then let's go follow the stars. And this is the Horsehead Nebula. The Horsehead is, um, it looks like a horse right there, you know? Uh, and this is called the Flaming Star or some people also call it the Christmas tree, also the flame nebula. Um, this is another area where there is, again, a lot going on. Um, the blues are reflection nebula. These are stars with a lot of bright dust around it. Um, and behind uh, the horse set is just a lot of emission nebula going on. There is actually, um, I'm trying to read my notes here. Yeah. So the, there's a lot of thick dust right here. And the stars behind it is what's illuminating the the area and there's a lot of hydrogen gas hydrogen alpha going on um that makes it just pop you know um i don't know what this looks like with a telescope i've never tried looking for it through a telescope um you can obviously see the bright stars in there but i don't know if you actually see the reflection in the telescope but if you could that would be really cool and then following down the tour this is another messier object called messier 78 um, I've also seen it called Casper the Friendly Ghost uh, in some places. 
Um, I've never seen Casper in here, but you know, it is what some people call it. So uh, I'm gonna stick with that name. And this is my longest picture to date. This was 14 hours of data. Uh, it took me three nights. Um, somehow I got three clear nights in a row um, and it's 14 hours of data. So this is uh, a lot of blue. So it's obviously the reflection nebula. A lot of dust lanes here. It's so a lot of dark dust of obstructing uh, the view, um, but it kind of makes for an interesting image. And the red down here is part of the Barnard's loop, which is which kind of goes all around Orion. Um, if you just take a picture of Orion as a whole, you'll see a, like a like a red hydrogen alpha loop, and that's this part of that. Um, but this was one of my funnest um, projects uh, to do, and um, and this was a lot of fun. This was actually my longest image to date. And hopefully it just goes from here. Like I would love to get more data and get better and longer images from here. Wow. Did you do the, did you, did you skip over the, uh, the video? Horse the horse? Uh, no, oh. I did the horse head right before this right here. I'm sorry. I was, I was fixing the chat room. So everybody <laughs> I've turned the chat room on now. So if you have questions, you can put them down there. Two things I'd like you to do for us, Rue. One is I'd like you to show us that video because uh, I think it kind of sums up what you've been talking about. And yeah. also, can you share your website? Give us a quick tour there too. Just take All us right, right so down the home page. Let's, let's do the website first. It's quicker. So I have a website. It's called lostphotons.com. It's fun. Uh, in my, you know, I call it lost photons because all the photons in space and time are lost if you don't capture with the camera or with your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think these were lost, but I found it with my camera. That's how I look at it. Um, you know, it's just a, just, a, just a blog of my astrophotography. It's just how I kind of keep track of what I've done. Um, it's a small project I started because during the pandemic, you know, didn't have to go to work for four months, mm -hmm. three months, and I had nothing better to do but make a website. Um, I also talk about my gear, um, what I, my telescope that I have, um, and hopefully this becomes a resource to people. And I'm not. Um, um, I also have like different weather links in here, so if you want to know what what the weather is in different places, at least for me, it's more like a resource for me. This is this is uh, this is all for me. But if someone else can have a useful information out of it, this would be great. Um, but I, uh, it's just something I started working on myself, and hopefully. Uh, I can keep adding on to it. It's just, uh, um, you know, when you share stuff on Instagram or Facebook, it cuts down the quality so much. Um, so this is just a way for me to share uh, my images uh, and have a have a tab of what I've done. Um, but yeah. Uh, like your own personal photo journal right there. It is, it is. And I have a photography tab in here because I do a lot of regular photography, but it's empty right now. But, you know, well, I'll add to it at I some found point. it interesting is like when I see you at Cherry Springs, I've watched your site and I see it grow like, oh, he must have been up the Springs this weekend. There's a new one, you know, and then I'll see the next one being made. So it's funny. It just evolves with you as you're going through your yeah. experience. It's um, kind of neat. I would, I would, and again, I would love for uh, it to be even with more images. And uh, uh, I, I, I did this because just like I wanted to show like my progress over time because I actually have um, like just to show you real quick, I have um, like this is the wizard nebula and now we're not in the night sky, but I was able to, this is what I did in July and this is what I did in September. So That's I was able right. to keep trab, tabs of it and it will help me kind of track my progress as well, which is, which is what I really wanted to tell. So now mesmerize us with a uh, synopsis of the whole ghost nebula. Shows All right. Nebula. So I did this video just as a fun project on YouTube. Can you see this right now so far? Uh, yes, we can. All right. Hopefully the, uh, there's the sound to it too. Hey, everybody. Turn to Lost Photons. It's Orion season. It's a little cloudy right now, but the forecast is calling for clear skies. So we'll see how that goes. I am on day two of a three-day imaging session. I'm photographing Messier 78 called as Casper the Friendly Ghost. I don't know why it's called that because it does not look like a ghost or Casper to me. Um, either way, this is going to be a time lapse of my processing. I know when you watch a time lapse, it's hard to see everything that's going on. So I'll put a brief description of all the steps in the comments. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. Take care.
Now that oh, is that is cool. Hey, Rue, would you mind? I'm thinking. I don't know if Al's on here, but um, I, I would love to play that out at Muddy Run somehow and work it in. Uh, we're supposed to teach some astrophotography there. Could, could you ever let us use it to, as like a motivation for people to like, turn down? <laughs> absolutely. Them? I mean, absolutely. Cool. It, it Sounds really like is. a fun idea. Well, for our worldwide audience on YouTube, I'm going to hit the gavel and say goodbye to all of you. But for our members, please stay online and you can turn your cameras back on. So this is the official part of the end of our gathering, everybody. Bye-bye, worldwide audience. Off you guys go.